Yes. Went to Porta Down once in the 40s and scored six against Porta Down, which was great. The problem was Porta Down scored 11. It starts now. Everybody tuned in. Go for it. Got married last year, and myself and my wife came here, and we got photographs took um, in our dresses. Talk about fairy tales, like, and that was probably that's been my one and only one I've got. Sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. George McMullen has the final say. I feel very emotional. It's keeping the people, you know, about a football club, but I do feel very emotional. I enjoyed it as a watcher. Now, when you're in the middle of it, it's a little bit more, it's, it's different. Once you get it in there, you, there's no getting it out. You're born or red, you'll die or red, that's what they say here. I'm Paul Trainer. Um, I'm the current president of the club. I'm also the club historian and statistician. Um, I've been coming here since 77, 78 season. In the 1870s, uh, football had taken off in Scotland and, and England, but not really in Ireland. Rugby and cricket were the, the team sports then. Um, 1878, 79, um, McAleary and a few others organised a, a exhibition game um, across town and that seemed to be of interest to people. So in September 1879, John McAleary and um, Robert Kennedy put a notice in the newsletter in uh, Northern Whig for people who wanted to form a club and the, it took off. And then from uh, around the time of the First World War, the doldrums set in, um, professionalism had taken off, other clubs Local clubs were very successful, um, and Clumbull won two trophies, I think, one in the 20s and one in the 30s, and nothing at all until the Irish Cup came in 79. Well, how's that for a vantage point? Probably not the most advisable. We'll just sort it out. Will Tony Bell fix it? Yes! What about that? Uh, there was one season in the 1960s, I don't know how they kept going in those days. There was one season in the 1960s where we won a game and lost every single other game, you know. Things like that, and went to Port Down once in the 40s and scored six against Port Down, which was great. The problem was Port Down scored 11, you know. It was <laughs> if you think of Cliftonville over the past 25 years, in 1998 they won the league title. And I have to say it was one of the most memorable league title wins in history because they hadn't won one since 1910, before the Titanic sunk. The big issue that day was that the authorities said that we had to kick off an hour before Linfield and Coleraine, at Coleraine. So everybody stayed in the ground, you know, the, and listened to radios, you know, and no smartphones in those days, so it was all, all transistor radios. To win it that day was just extraordinary. I don't think anyone who was at solitude that afternoon will ever forget it. sit and wait for an hour and it's not right but we're absolutely delighted and well done and the place just erupted you know it was, the atmosphere was terrific everybody was on the on the, the pitch and marvelous marvelous times 1910 was the last time the reds won the irish league the outpouring of emotion at solitude on saturday a mixture of unbridled joy and mammoth relief Association football, as it was known, may well have come to Northern Ireland, to Ireland at, at some stage in the, the past. Clinville were the, the first to organise in, in this area, in the, on this island. 
um, with help from the Irish Football Association, the County Honour Football Association. Um, we helped set up the competitions that there are. We helped set up the league. Um, I think we're an integral part of football in, in Ireland and uh, very proud of that fact is we, we have that history going back 140 odd years. Um, and while and it were times in the doldrums, some people thought that we should fold or go down, down divisions. We, we stuck it out um, and we're very proud to have been associated with foot, the highest level of football in Northern Ireland and Ireland uh, for coming up to 150 years. McLaughlin nearly took the Reds to another league title a couple of seasons ago and now bringing it bang up to date you have Jim Magilton, a former Northern Ireland captain who has taken over at Cliftonville and right now is doing an extremely good job. I think it was just the conversations I had with uh, the board and and I really enjoyed the conversations. Again, it was, it gets the juices flowing again, you're in an interview process and I enjoyed what they'd said to me and uh, initially we couldn't reach an agreement on certain things and then in the end we did and I have to say I've really enjoyed the experience thus far. Jim Magilton came in and um, I think it's fair to say not everyone would have liked to have seen him become the Cliftonville manager but you look at the job that he's done so far it's been absolutely brilliant. He approached me and and I and out of professional courtesy I, you know I went and heard what they had to say and gave my views and thoughts and ideas on uh, on Cliftonville again I was an admirer of what I'd seen from Cliftonville the last few years. Paddy had established a very good squad, they were very competitive. I liked what I'd seen, I thought I could help uh, develop the players even further and listen, working with players back on the pitch really appealed to me. Uh, the role as elite performance director at the FA, it was largely centred around building that programme for the kids and trying to get an elite pathway to England and I think we succeeded in that so uh, when that was done on a Saturday morning if you like, I, I couldn't wait to go and see another game so uh, I was around the league, I was around the games, I was around boardrooms and I enjoyed the whole experience. I enjoyed it as a watcher, now when you're in the middle of it it's a little bit more, it's, it's different because the same emotions that were flowing and uh, were happening when I was sitting on a touchline or standing on a touchline at Portman Road, for example, are exactly the same feelings now. I was a huge fan and supporter of Tommy Breslin and, and Peter Murray and obviously Ger. Ger worked there as well when they won their league titles. Uh, and I loved going to watch the games there. You're right, the fans are passionate about their club and they want their club to do well, they want their players to do well and they have an identity with their players and they love players from that part of the world going on to represent their football club as they see it. So there was a lot of positive ticks, if you like, for, uh, to take the job. Uh, but you know when you're in the job, ultimately you're going to be judged on performances and results. He's got them up there near the top of the table. He's got them playing really, really good football. And then um, Heal, Gallagher, Wilson, those three have been three of the stars of the season so far in the Irish League. Given the time scale coming in and pre-season and getting obviously the staff organised and then getting the players organised, I think, I think it's, a, in my opinion, it's a fair reflection on performances. Our levels of performance have been extremely high. And I think we're second on merit, uh, but as you quite rightly say, it's just a start, it's 12 games in, 
and there's so much more work to be done and so much more work to be done with the players because uh, I know there's so much more room for improvement. But Jilton plays the type of football that the Reds fans love. They love exciting football, they love football that um, brings them to their feet and Magilton is certainly delivering that so far. My time at Clinton, when I came in, uh, obviously I've, I've supported them all my days, like, but um, when I came in to play, we actually were in a relegation playoff against Armagh. So uh, things weren't great when we just arrived, you know, so it was tough times, but it was still still, still brilliant because we had a great group, group of lads and they all bought in, they were all Clinton men, and so it was always a special, special time to play for the team. And then we won, I think we won the League Cup in 2002 or 2003 with Marty, Marty Tab as manager. <clears throat> and it was amazing, to be honest, it was amazing, it meant so much. Because of the performance in the second half. It's the first Shield win for Cliftonville since 1997 and it's bound to help their confidence. It just became a building process. I think Gerard Lawler came in as chairman. I think their plans was always to try and build the club uh, in the background was more important than winning matches and winning leagues and then eventually they started we started bringing in good enough players to start challenging. Only ones here between Gormley, falls for Boyce on the left foot, Liam Boyce! Stunning strike from Liam Boyce! The team that Breslin built was something else, it really was. They, had full of, they were full of steel, they were full of style and in Liam Boyce and Joe Gormley they had a, a front line partnership that just tormented defences and scored goals for fun. They were exhilarating to watch, they really were. Tommy Breslin and his backroom staff, they deserve this so much. I had a great core where boys grew up supporting Clippenville. And obviously, it meant so much for us when we were putting the jersey on. You know, Cats, Jante, the Skinnells, uh, even Brazzy coming in as a manager was a player, was a supporter. Him and Minto, Minto as well, player, supporter. So we had that big core, of, we all bought into the shirt and what it meant to play for them. So it meant so much, yes, even the likes of Boise, who came through the academy, you know, young, loved the, loved the club as well. Joe, so it was always it was, it made it extra special because we were all club well men. Boys, lovely skill. Boys, it falls for Curran. Chris Curran finds Boys a real chance for Clifton Bell, and he takes it. People often ask me, you know, the group. What was the group? The, the group, in some cases, was the biggest pack of wing nuts that God ever put together but probably because of Brezzy's personality and his way of dealing with them and managing them was such a unique experience that he got 110, 120% out of people and out of players who just wanted to go through brick walls for him. Takes it right footed, takes a deflection and goes in! Cliftonville take the lead, it's Liam Boyce! I always look forward to Limfield to be honest because obviously they were the team with the beat, they were winning the leagues every year and if they weren't winning they were finished second so they were always the big dogs, they were the ones we always look forward to. It wasn't a surprise when we won the league really because we thought we were doing so well, we, we, we can do this, you know? And for Jordy McWilliam to, to score a, a penalty and at the end of the match to win the league was just, you know, unbelievable. Magic at the end of the match. Still boys, still boys, brought down, Liam boys, brought down inside the penalty area. It's a penalty for Cliftonville. And I always remember Tim McGarry turning to me and saying, who writes these scripts? You know, and that was just written in the stars in that particular day. An opportunity to win the league championship. Obviously for me to score the winning penalty was unbelievable. Like you wouldn't talk about fairy tales like and that was probably that's been my one and only one I've got. George McMullen, here he comes, sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. George McMullen has the final say. Cliftonville have won the league championship. George McMullen with his Aguero moment we're on the penalty spot. And it's funny and even on that night, you know I remember solitude and, we're, you know, Brezzy disappeared for an hour and a half. It's like, well, he's away home to park a car. 
Like that's where, you know, I remember in, in the early, everybody's looking Brezzy, everybody's looking to go to the, across from the boardroom, the social club, and nobody could go because Brezzy was away, you know, to park the car. Irish League champions. And there we go. Soak with champagne. Sum this moment up. Uh, unbelievable. I don't even drink. Uh, well, do you like, but <laughs> no, it's sure, unbelievable. Yeah. It's just, it's just nice, real. You know, we've got a cup, we've got medals around our necks, and the, and the players and I can, re can re actually realise I've got some tangible to say that we're league champions, and we are. And then others, I mean, the League Cup four times in a row was just sort of nice and on the cake. The space to pick out the cross, and that header straight there. Martin Donnelly! Who might well have scored a winner? They were amazing, obviously. You, you, whenever, like I say, just joined during a relegation playoff, you never thought you were going to win a league, a league title here. So to win back to back was unreal. But then the players we had, and then uh, Brazzy made it all special. Three or four poor down players, but it's one back by McMullen. Curran again hits it low! How important the goal could that be from Chris Curran? It's just tremendous, you know, to, to do back to back. The, the players have set history and uh, just a later fall. Tommy's sadly missed. Tommy was uh, a terrific manager and a, a lovely guy. Uh, and I don't know anybody had a, would have had a bad word to, to say about him. You know, he's very sadly missed. Such a wonderful, wonderful human being that I think football in Northern Ireland, the club and Cliftonville, we were all just so uniquely blessed to know him and have him in our lives and I don't think his personality or achievements overall will ever be repeated. Is that like Clifford to make it easy for ourselves winning the last minute? Absolutely outstanding, all season, league champions. Let's enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's something I always done at a very young age. Um, I used to live in Upper Terrace, which was kind of flats in front of St Peter's Cathedral, and I remember being out the back of there kicking a ball, which was um, pretty young, probably six. Um, I suppose the, the big memory I have is whenever we moved um, to St Peter's Place, and I remember, I didn't know anyone in the street, and I remember my neighbour being out uh, kicking the ball against the wall and um, going out to her and asking her could I play. So we used to play five-a-side um, tournaments in Mayfield every year through our youth club, um, Frank Gillen Centre, and it was um, Marty Foyle, our, our youth leader, that used to get us into it. And it was just, again, friends from, from my area, and um, it was Mickey Smith, who was the coach of Newington Girls at the time, who um, spotted me playing there and, and asked me to, to come and join the team. And Marty Foyle got it set up, and myself and two of my friends, Jeannie and Roseanne, the three of us went over. I think it was in 2002 where the talk started with Cliftonville to, to kind of amalgamate with them and, and move over and change our name from Newington Girls to, to Cliftonville and um, I suppose that's where, where it started with, with, with the club. I remember the early days we used to, we actually used to get hammered by the big clubs um, but again it wasn't really about going out and, and winning leagues or anything, it was just about being together as a team because we were all really close um, but for a few years we we started to win the championship, come up to Premier League, but then we went straight back down again. Um, and it wasn't until I think around 2012, 2013 maybe, that we finally got up and, and stayed in the Premier League. So it's only been around 10 years where we've actually been playing in, in the top flight of, of the game here. Recently, when, when COVID hit, um, we, we had no man, we had lost our manager, we had no coach, and the under 21. Uh, Cliftonville coaching staff came in and kind of took took us as an interim kind of period um, and after that they decided to stay and from then the club's just invested massively and you know we, ha we now have a team, a full management team who look after us. Um, we have a kit woman, finance manager, we have so many people around us um, that's making us the success that we are and, and without just those people we wouldn't be anywhere. It was actually really emotional um, for me because there was a time that I didn't think that I'd ever win it in my career. I mean, I'm, I'm coming, I'm 38 now, I'm, 
hopefully I have a, a few more years left and feeling good but um, there, there definitely was a time where I thought I would never get it and so when we actually did get it over the line it was yeah it was emotional um, I'm so thankful for the, for the management team who, who came in and took over because without them we would never have got there um, they came in they, they brought um, exciting players into the club young you know international players um, they they made a, a really good team out of um, an average one that that we had and you know togetherness and stuff that they brought was was unbelievable and you know we won it last year we were unfortunate in the cups last year and then this year you know we've played in every single um, game there is to play we've played in four finals and um, we just fell short of the league and you know it's it's just amazing what what they've done in that short space of time I mean within three years it came in and they come in and, and we won a league and we've won um, three three um, cups as well so yeah it's an exciting time for, for the girls um, section for me, when I go back to whenever I just started out, um, it was really difficult to find a team. Um, again, I just played in the street until I got that opportunity. Now, I fast forward 20 plus years, um, the opportunities are there for girls, and what football can bring to them, um, you know, is, is unbelievable opportunities. And and for me, it's it's now about trying to inspire those young girls to get into the game and to get into some sort of sport because, for me, a sport has given me everything. Um, and yeah, for having that experience, I would just love young girls to, to get into it and experience, you know, those life skills and those opportunities and and everything that football brings. I mean, I've been here. I've been at the club since I was um, 15. Um, it's it's just a part of my my life now, and you know, we we laugh about it in terms of people who. Um, are near and dear to the Clippenville. Once you're in it, you know it's it's just fa it's your family. It's a way of life. Um, I mean, I got married last year, and myself and my wife came here, and we got photographs took um, in our dresses. So, yeah, it's something that's really close to my heart, and always will be. And um, hopefully, I'll continue after I stop playing to, to be involved in in some sort of way. And if that's coaching the younger players or being part of the senior setup, um, but I'll continue to, to have it as part of my life because it's been, yeah, it's been there for me since I was young. Score prediction tonight. Two one red. Two one red. So I think it's going to be two each tonight. But don't be telling anybody. Right, Freddie. We'll see you after the match. Have to get you uh, your Clippenville score, Freddie, for after the match. Any night under the lights is always very special, and and I hope it's another special night for them. But. Linfield have been, you know, the the team to beat and have been over many, many years. And David Healy and Ross Oliver and the staff have done an absolutely incredible job. I've nothing but the utmost respect for what they've done and what the players have achieved. Again, you know, I always say if you can finish above them, you'll have a great chance of winning the league. To solitude, you go up the Cliftonville Road, and then you start seeing all the Cliftonville fans with their their red scarves, their red hats, and you always feel a, a buzz about the place. And whenever you get inside Cliftonville, solitude is a very, very old ground, and um, you can almost feel and touch the history once you enter the place. But the one thing that has been consistent throughout its time at Solitude is the, the supporters. Boy, can they make a racket when they get going, and um, at Clifton fans, the atmosphere that they will create against Linfield on Friday night will be electric and then that will hopefully, they will feel, inspire their team to go on and produce a big performance. It's a fantastic match, it really is, and it's one of those epic Irish League contests that we always look forward to. First versus second. Jim McGilton will be looking for a win because 
To me, this is one of those matches where he will be able to tell how far his Cliftonville team have come since he has taken over as manager. Well, it's cagey enough so far, I have to say, I think Cliffin are probably the better team. I haven't made many opportunities, any clear-cut opportunities, but I'd be happy enough if it was Jim the Jilton. You know, I was talking to a Linfield fan before the match, they said they'd be happy with a draw, and I think they would be, but I think we'll come out in the second half and we'll be a bit better, a bit more cutting the edge, and uh, I reckon 2-0. Very good. I thought we uh, went toe to toe with the league leaders. I thought we created some really good opportunities. We didn't take them. They have, I would say, probably two or three opportunities, maybe, maybe. But they take one, and it was a, you know, it was a mistake. And from that mistake, they score a goal. But listen, I can't. Overall, I'm very pleased with the performance. We talk about the games, and we talk about, and the, you know, the the games as. Uh, as they come along and this was a big game for us and unfortunately we were uh, on the wrong end of a 1-0 defeat but listen I can't knock the players for their effort, their application, their quality and on another night we score one or two goals and uh, and yeah so disappointed but ready to go again. So I'm Mark Smith, uh, currently Head of Academy. Day-to-day um, -day involves many different aspects of football club. Basically, I'm in charge of the development of the kids in the academy from five-year-old up until ultimately we get them into the first team. Um, that role involves many different things from managing the coaches, managing people, dealing with parents, but ultimately making sure that our teams are competing, they're developing, coaches are doing the right job and everyone's we just create an environment that ultimately hopefully gets players to aspire into the first team. 
So the academy now, we had roughly 300 kids. We have teams from four year old, basically, up until the first team. Uh, reason being, it's like a conveyor belt. We start them young, the four year olds, the five year olds. We hopefully, the, the ethos of the club is from then comes kids come in at four and five that this is all they know. They're local kids, a lot of them. Cliftonville's their only club. They have a desire to play for the shirt. You know, they don't want to leave because ultimately this is all they know. Uh, and they're just steeped in, steeped in the Cliftonville brand, basically. Um, and that's what's been really successful for us because a lot of the kids that have came through the skill school, four and five, we're now looking, like say the Corn Madden, who's going to Man United, Newcastle this week. You know, we're fruits of our labor, basically, from them young ages. So the success, what probably everyone looks for and what everyone sees is the players getting the first team, but that's just a minimal part of it. For me, the success comes in many different formats. You know, success for me is, even at five-year-old, seeing a kid walk in the door who, shy, hangs on to the parent, to see them just come out of their shell and just even love the game, that's success in itself from a young age. Ultimately, the serious side of it, the elite side of it with the boys behind us is the Sean Moores getting Sean Moore. We look we look last year at our 05s with Liam McStravick playing at Airdrie. We have Shea Kearney, Jack Berry, Oren Donnelly playing the first team. We've Sean Moore, went to West Ham and we've Mick Morgan at Ballyclare. I don't think there's many clubs in the country have got that success rate. Um, won't always be that every year. Some years are different, but we're having a really successful time. We want Clevenville is to be all they know. So, you know, the real passion for the club, the community, everyone buys in. Some of them kids, their parents, ultimately, maybe weren't fans, they are fans now. But more importantly, everyone just wants to play for that badge. And this is the club that they love, that they always want to be to. And they'll always look back, even if they leave, they'll always look and say, I'd love to go back there. Um, I think even at first team level, if you look at, I think this club's special. You look at some of the players that come here and have moved on, the Conor McManamums, the Jay Donnellys, the Tomas Cosgroves, the Levi Ives. There's not many clubs produce players, even at first team level, like we do, the Liam Boyces. Um, and I just think it's a special club with a special ethos. And it's one of them places that when you've been here, you don't want to leave. Hence, I've been here 11 years and I don't see myself ever going to any other club. Joe the goal just keeps on scoring. Didn't, didn't really play till it was about nine or ten, I think it was. And then obviously getting picked for the school team and stuff. Uh, sort of gave me the opportunity to go and play for the likes of the local youth club. And then that sort of sort of started. Yeah, I went to, moved down the yard on youth club and it sort of kicked off from there. I thought it was a great opportunity for me to go and showcase a bit of the talent that I, I hopefully uh, have showed over the years. But it all wasn't that rosy. like. Joe's been unfortunate, you know, Rory and, and Chris have been in such good form all season. You know, in pre-season, Joe, Joe scored something like 13 goals and unfortunately he hasn't been able to get a look in. But he's come on and I think that's his fourth goal. He scores important goals, he's a goal scorer and he, he's, he's actually another player for the future. I think because whenever I'd, I'd played for Clinville under 18s and there was times I was going the game, I didn't even make the team and then it was sort of, uh, the end of us probably put back a wee bit because I, I did join the Crumlin Star. And then from there, Clinville, there was loads of teams interested and always said that the first team that would come in for me I would go to, but it didn't work out that way, so it didn't. So, but it was obviously Clinville that chose in the end and it was, it was well worth it. It's a good ball to find Gormley. Oh, what a finish! Brazilian-like, outside the right foot. Joe's been remarkable. He's, he's just come in down the earth. Great lad, obviously local as well, and he loves the club. So he wears his heart in his sleeve like all the rest of us did. Comes in the stands, your family are at every single game. You are now a record breaker. Ah, well, I just rather win leagues. Records mean nothing to me. So I, don't, I just win leagues and that's it. Leagues and cups. I know it was like it was something I would never have dreamt of, you know. Obviously going from Mammy Charlie, Crumlin Star, till playing in the, the biggest league in the country. And 
they, they do so well myself personally and then even just the boys in and around the team it was it was like a family more so than anything Goal number 30 was down to some individual brilliance. Joe Gormley famously doesn't do television interviews, but he's not too camera shy when it comes to handing out kisses. However, that's allowed if the girl in the crowd is your mum. You know, some of the, 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 the interpass and the, the, the way they linked up together, you know, the, the one-twos, uh, you know, I, I don't think anybody could have handled them to me. Three ball. Gormley's one-on-one, one. that's a brilliant goalkeeper, it's a brilliant finish, Clifton will go 3 0 in front, show the goal. And with Tommy being involved and at the helm of it, uh, was incredible because I loved him, uh, I love playing for him, and he gave me the opportunity till this day of hopefully paid head back but he's given me the chance as is this man Joe Gormley 1-0 it was direct but it was effective from Cliftonville the long clears was flicked on into the path of Gormley and that's his 20th of the season going for distance oh what a goal Joe Gormley he's having his own personal goal of the season competition this year it nothing gets above him, nothing really fails him. He doesn't get carried away with scoring goals. You no, know, I've broke this record, I've done that record. He's still just as hungry now as well to score goals as he was when he just came on the scene. So, no, he's one of the nicest fellas you'll ever meet, Joe. Johnson's header, Gormley at pace. Gormley has done well, he's done very well. Well, Climble were always in my heart, you know, and I think it was. Whenever the opportunity came back to go back to Clinville, I think it was, I think I had no, uh, obviously had a few other offers from other teams, but I just wanted what was best for myself. Obviously, coming home, I wanted to start, I wanted to start a family and stuff, and I think that I probably had to look after myself, and I was lucky, luck, luckily enough that Clinville came through with the right deal for me, and I was happy to sign, and I couldn't wait to get it sorted as soon as I could. In the 13th minute, won't be unlucky for Gormley. No, it won't, an emphatic finish. It's the visitors who take the lead, and Joe the goal is a record breaker. Nobody wants to see him end, you know, and the kids, you see games here, the kids line up the fence, want to see Joe. You know, they like the other players and stuff, but the Joe Gormley's the one that everybody wants to, to, to say hello to and get a picture taken with. This season he's, he's hit the ball, he's hit the uh, ground running again and he's still banging back uh, goals into the back of the net. So long may I continue for Joe, hopefully for another few seasons yet. As a bystander looking in on the league over many years, I've always been a huge fan of Joe Gormley and his goal scoring record is extraordinary. You do get people um, saying, tell you about what I've achieved and for the club and stuff, but until I stop playing, I don't think I'll realise how actually, how actually good it was. And do you know, it's, it'll be, I don't really want to be looking forward to the day I stop playing, but I know and it's probably coming soon, but until then, I'll not realise how, how good of a, a job I've done. And hopefully I've made so many Reds fans happy. To get the opportunity to work with Joe, obviously, was one of the many reasons why I took the job, but I still think there's room for improvement with Joe, believe it or not. And Joe has taken on board everything that we've thrown at him and has been an outstanding leader in the dressing room. Uh, and an outstanding player, scoring goals again, makes him happy, keeps him happy. I think it means an awful lot, Tommy, you know, uh... I first got the opportunity, as I say, as the big, uh, the biggest league in the country, and just that it, uh, it means the world to me. I love playing for Clinville, and until Clinville want to get rid of me, I want to stay as long as possible, and hopefully see out, see out the rest of my career there. Game, really tough place to go. Uh, we be ready. Uh, we pick the bones out of the game. Listen, I, you know, every game is a learning curve for us all, and we pick the bones out of that where we can be better. But certainly, 
Uh, I'm very proud of the players. I have to. I have to be honest. You know, the three points, you're, you're heading back up the road with three points in the bag and the fans can head back up in the bus and enjoy themselves. Um, but it's, it's actually special for me. It's, I'm, a, I'm a Climbo fan myself. My dad's in the stand, you know, my, my mates be here, so it's even better knowing that's happening. Magnificent they were. From minute one, then, you know, whatever it was, 93 minutes, they're, they're, they're unbelievable support. Uh, for this football club and they come in their numbers again and we've sent them home with three points. I'm not sure we've sent them home happy because they've seen us play better but listen, it's a great result for us. Club, but I do feel very emotional and great attachment to this club. And it's just, you know, it's an important part of my life, Once you get it in there, there's no getting it out. You're born a red, you'll die a red, that's what they say here.
takes it 2-0. There's a down the chase. Mike it down through. And that's 2 1. Barry Johnston who delivers. And it almost went right the way through. And how's Linden was there to follow it in. And Cliftonville strike straight back.